Welcome design students. In this video we're going to create a lightsaber. We're going to use some simple modeling techniques with which you're already familiar and we're going to use our studio lighting rig that we've already created in a previous video and finally for the new thing we're going to learn we're going to add some animation for the uh, blade of the lightsaber and we're also going to add some effects on it to make it glow. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do for this or any other project and unless you have specific directions, is you need to gather reference and inspiration. And for this, all you need to do is Google uh, lightsaber and then do an image search, and you'll see all sorts of images of lightsabers. Now, what I've decided to do is the lightsaber from Return of the Jedi, Episode 6, which is Luke's lightsaber, which is actually an evolution of Obi-Wan Kenobi's original lightsaber and Luke's lightsaber. And here are the two compared, actually. This is the original Obi-Wan Kenobi lightsaber, and this is Luke's lightsaber from Episode 6. Now, all of these original props were made from a variety of different just household items and junk. Um, in fact, this piece right here is the gas uh, nozzle from a stove, and this piece right here is a piece of a grenade that uh, is launched from a rifle. Pretty interesting. And this piece right here is a piece from a, uh, a flash, an old-fashioned flash handle that you used to hold on a camera. The original lightsaber from Luke Skywalker, this thing right here, was pretty much the whole uh, old-style flash handle from a camera. And these things here are actually windshield wiper blades that are just cut up in strips and put around it. So we sort of uh, went through an evolution here from junk to something that was actually constructed to be a lightsaber. I think they machined these parts right here. And just to show you this, I don't want to geek out on this too much, but you can see here, this is the original flash equipment for the camera that was used to make the lightsaber. Here's the handle, and here's where you put the bulb and the reflector thing. But if you look at this, you can clearly see that this is pretty much wholesale what they used to make Luke Skywalker's lightsaber in the original movie. And just so you see what it looks like, this is what it looked like eventually. Now you see here's the flash handle part. There's the red button and the little plug and the little clip, just like on the thing. And here is the piece that they added where they took windshield wiper blades and cut them into strips and put it around the perimeter of it. Now the actual lightsaber effect was done with a basically a stick sticking out from the end so that the actors could actually fight with it like a sword and then the lightsaber effect was put on it in post-production. It was actually hand painted onto the film in a process called rotoscoping. Okay so back to the subject. Um, so I've decided to create one from episode 6 which is this one and so I googled I did image searches of it, and um, I found lots of different images. And then I actually Googled plans, and look what you can get. Um, you can get actual measurements and blueprints for these things if you want to. So I want to save this image, and I just want to demonstrate to you how to save an image into your project folder for use as reference. So I'm going to right-click on this and click Save Image As. And I want you to notice that it is going into my lightsaber project folder that I have already created. And I'm putting that in the images folder in there. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to use these in a program called uh, PureRef that I'll demonstrate to you and that I will put on your computers as well for your use. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then in Maya, I have created a project folder and um, I used project window and you can see here there's my project folder and I put it in my Maya 2023 folder which happens to be on my external hard drive. So here I have PureRef open and I'm going to navigate to my project folder where I have the images stored. And here are my images and then all you got to do is drag them in. Now, these are WebBP images. I can't use them without converting them somehow. Then I'm going to zoom out. 
I'm going to move these around. And what I can do is I can scale these and sort of layer them and have them sitting there for reference if I need it. And here I have the, do I have the same thing twice? Maybe. But the cool thing about, about PureRef is that it stays on top of your editor window. And you can move around and zoom in and in and out on your pictures and get get a good look at detail and stuff like that without having to uh, switch back and forth to a web page or to you know the image program on your computer. I mean, it's made to do this. Now I'm on a PC, but if you're on a Mac and you have PureRef selected, you'll see your main menu up here at the top. On a PC, you right click, and I'm going to go ahead and save my PureRef uh, collage here, and I'm going to put it in my lightsaber images folder and I'm going to name it lightsaber reference now that is my little pure ref file now if this is annoying you at some point and you don't want it to be on top anymore you can go to the main menu and change the uh, settings uncheck always on top you can put it on bottom now it's disabled, and so when I select Maya, it's going to disappear. And if I want to look at it again, I can just hit uh, Alt-Tab on my PC and select the program and bring it back. If I want it to be on top again, I can change the settings back to Always on Top. Now on a Mac, that would be Command-Tab to switch to the program. And if you want to move the window around, you just right-click and move it. So I'm going to move this off my screen for a sec. And then I'm going to create a free image plane for, for modeling reference in my scene. So I'm going to go to Create, Free Image Plane. And there's my free image plane. Now I have my um, Attributes Editor turned off here. So I'm going to click on it to open it back up. Here it is. Here's the image plane um, settings. So I'm going to click the little folder. And that is going to take me to the source images folder, but I have my images in the images folder and it doesn't really matter. I can use them there if I want. And I'm going to use, I think, this one to guide my modeling. And then I'm going to move it up a little bit. Look at it in the side view to make sure it's sitting on the ground here. And then I'm going to create the cylinder that this is going to be based on, but I'm going to use my pure ref images to determine that the entire length of the lightsaber here is 278 millimeters. So if you can find measurements, uh, that's great. I would encourage you to try to make this thing to scale. So how do we determine how big our cylinder is in Maya? Well, the general default uh, units in Maya are centimeters. Now we can change that if we go to the uh, preferences, which can be found under Windows, Settings and Preferences. And on a Mac, you can click the Apple menu and bring up the preferences. So I'm going to go to Settings right here, and I'm going to click on it. And here are our units. Right now, we're in centimeters. Now, I can change that to millimeters if I want. But I'm going to leave it in centimeters because we should know from science class that 278 millimeters is 27.8 centimeters. So what I'm going to do is move my window over here and create a cylinder. And I'm going to um, go to the polycylinder node here. And remember, I can also do that in my channel box by clicking right here. And for the height, which is the length of it if it was laying on its side, I'm going to make it 27.8 and you can see that it gets quite large. And then I'm going to get my rotate tool. I'm going to double click and make sure that the snapping is on and I'm going to rotate it so that it's laying on its side. Then I'm going to grab my image plane and I'm going to switch to the front view and I'm going to scale my image plane up so that it is the size of or the length of my cylinder and there we go and now the scale of my image plane and my cylinder are the same and I can use this as a guide
I'm going to do one more thing before we leave here. I'm going to select my um, image plane and I'm going to come over here to the channel box and click this last button to create a layer for my image plane. We'll double click it, rename it reference, give it a color, save it, and then I'm going to freeze my image plane. Now if you're not sure if your image plane is in your layer, you can click the V button here to make sure that that's what's in there. If it's not, then right click, delete the layer, and redo it again. Alright, so when we come back, we'll begin to model this thing, and I'll see you then.